Hi, this is Alexis Hasselberger, time management and productivity coach. And today I want to share with you one of my favorite to do apps called TickTick. It's one that I recommend quite frequently to my clients, and it's one that I also use myself. Um, it is a great app that is both easy to use and it has all those features that you want, but none of the bloaty ones that you don't. And so it's, it's really a low barrier for entry. It has a fantastic free version. And I want to spend a, just a couple of minutes showing you how I use this so that you can use it in a way that really makes sense and that helps keeping, makes keeping track of your tasks really easy. So first, I just want to talk about kind of the general layout of TickTick. So over here on the left-hand side, you're going to see all the different views that you have of your different tasks. So I like to use this today view or the next seven days view. It gives me a good overview of what I have left to do today. It's nearing the end of the day, so I've almost done with everything that I have to do today. And then um, also it shows you, you know, what's on the docket for tomorrow, Saturday, et cetera. It shows you the next seven days. That's a great way to look at things. I'm almost always looking at it from the today view, especially because I'm using it on my phone most of the time. And so I'm really just trying to see what do I have to do today to make progress on my goals, et cetera. Uh, then we have lists. So this is sort of how you can categorize things. Because I primarily use TickTick for um, personal, I really have mostly just personal tasks that are dated in the inbox. And I don't break those tasks out amongst a bunch of different categories. But if you're going to use it for work as well, then you can you know, just create a list called work and you can put tasks in there as well. When I'm thinking about lists, I really try to keep it simple because everything that has a date is going to show up in one of these views, the today or the next seven days view or you know, a longer view if the date is farther out. Um, I'm usually using those views, but you can also have undated lists. So for me, this inbox has all of the dated tasks. So when am I gonna do specific things? And in this example, I put a work task in here that's dated as well. And those will all roll up into the today and the next seven days views. But you can also have lists that are undated by default. And in these lists, you can use them for what I call um, you know, opportunistic lists. So if you're at the grocery store, then you know what to, that you need to pick up. You can be adding things to it all the time. So you, know, you can put your grocery list on there. Um, I have a list of to read and to read for work. These are things obviously that when somebody gives me a recommendation for something, I'm gonna put it on here so that I don't have to you know, try to rack my brain to remember these things all the time. You know, to watch, so videos um, or you know, TV shows, movies that people have recommended to me or that I've read about. Things I wanna listen to, restaurants to try. That's a great one too. You can see these two household and restaurants, they're shared with my spouse. So both of us keep um, you know, household related tasks, which sometimes we assign to each other. And then also you know, restaurants to try that we want to, want to try out here. So you can keep these undated lists as well. And those are your more opportunistic lists, but anything that's dated will roll up into these views for your tasks. So let's go into a task and look at how we actually use the fields within the task. So let's go into this work task that I created here. This is just an example. And so here you'll see the task. Um, the name of it is you know, Client X Workshop. This is actually you know, something that I do in my work. I do workshops for clients, and so that's what I'm using here. And you'll see that even though I have dates on this, I've put a date in here. And this is because it's the due date. So I'm doing this workshop on the 6th of May. So I've put that there because there's only one date field. And I, instead of using the due date for that field, I want to be using this as a next action date. So I want to be using this date field so that it rolls up into the today and the next seven days so that I know when to do the next action on a list for a particular task. Some tasks and projects have real due dates like this one. It's happening on a specific date. But sometimes tasks and projects don't have like hard deadlines. And so by uh, putting the hard deadline in the task name, now we're able to sort our list by this date that we're using here, this date field, and we're calling that the next action date. So when are we gonna perform the next action? So you'll see here, the name, the title of the task is here. And then that also shows up over here on the right-hand panel. And then you'll see that in this description area, I have a bunch of check boxes. And I've done that because I really like to list out what the steps are for something, and then I can check them off. So you'll see for this one, I've already sent the proposal, that checked off. And then I already put a note in here that I'd sent it because that's gonna tell me um, when I did that so that I don't have to try to remember. 
So you can also, if you don't like this checkbox feature, you can also just click here. And now it's just a free form uh, notes zone where you can put whatever you want. But I personally really like the checkbox for any kind of multi-step project. So the way I would use this is now I'm saying, okay, so I sent this proposal, I just sent it, what, 17 minutes ago, it's timestamped for me. And then I changed this date up here because even though this workshop's not due until you know, a month from now, uh, in fact, the next step I wanna do is gonna be on April 7th. So on April 7th, I am going to want to follow up on the signed proposal to make sure it gets signed from the client. Now, once the proposal is signed, let's just pretend it's happened today. Let's say they got back to me early and I don't actually need to follow up with them. You know, I can just check that off. And then what I like to do is go ahead and copy what I did, pop it into the comments and hit enter. And that is going to timestamp what I've done. So now I never have to try to remember, wait, when did I send that proposal? When did they get back to me? If you have longer notes, maybe you had a meeting with the client and now you have some notes related to that, you can also put these in the comments. So you have a single source for all of the things that you need to do for this particular task or project. And then what we do is we move the next action date to be what the next action is. So let's say this proposal is now signed. Well, let's say, you know, now I guess um, maybe Wednesday, I will go ahead, I'll look at my calendar and see if it makes sense for me to create the outline on Wednesday. I will put it on Wednesday, oh, there we go. And now it's gonna pop up for me on Wednesday and I don't have to think about it until then, which is a really great thing because I don't wanna use my brain to be thinking about all the things I have to do. I, in fact, wanna be using my brain to focus on the task at hand. And so that's how I use this. It's kind of a revolving door. We've got the task name or the project name up here. We've got the next steps here. And if you don't know all the next steps, that's just fine. You just put in one step or the first step. You change the date to be when are you gonna do that step? It's the next step date or the next action date. And then in the comments, you just take a quick moment to write in what you did so that you never have to think about it again. So that is you know, the very basics of how I use TickTick. There are so many other features in here that are really great. You can templatize things, you can have a Pomodoro timer, you can track your habits, there's a lot of great things. But I wanted to just give you an overview of how do we use the fields within TickTick to manage our tasks so that we have this really nice view of you know, what do we need to do today. Thank you so much for listening and I hope this is helpful for you if you are trying out TickTick.